Hello, my name is Mandy and I'm a professional makeup artist. And I wanted to come in and just chit chat a little bit about makeup testers and why the public is now being fearful of them where they always should have been fearful of them. Makeup testers in most makeup places like Sephora, Ulta, Shoppers Drug Mart, London Drugs, um, any place where there is open to the public testers, those have always been dangerous. But because we were unaware that they were dangerous and we thought that of course a company would take care of us and they wouldn't allow us to be put in danger, we trusted that those products were safe. And I'm going to tell you, they've never been safe. Even with this whole coronavirus breakout thing, makeup testers, never, ever, ever, ever been test, never been safe. They've never been safe. Um, you can go into a place and you can see a beautiful tester like this and you can pull that tester apart and you can stick it right on your mouth and put it back inside of itself. You have now just contaminated this product and then the next person's gonna come along and put it on their mouth and put it back in. Sometimes they stick it on their hands. This is another thing a lot of people do, will swatch on their hands and that's fine and dandy, except that what if you didn't wash your hands very well after you went to the bathroom? You've now put fecal matter inside this tube and then the next person's gonna go put it on their hand or their face and so on and so on. If you've ever been to a beauty counter and you've had your makeup done, for the most part, they use testers on your face. So you have basically been paying someone to contaminate you with fecal matter, with different kinds of things like pink eye and impetigo and cold sores and so on and so on and so on. Contact dermatitis is another one. These are major, major, major skin issues that are easily avoidable if companies like Sephora and Ulta and Shoppers Drug Mart and London Drugs and Rite Aid and all these other places that sell makeup, if they would just put their testers away so that a staff member who is trained properly in how to use a product sanitarily um, put it on your face, then those would be safe. But because they're all open for people to stick their fingers in them, they're not safe. And I, I don't want to cause mass hysteria, um, but they've never been safe. So if you've ever stuck a tester on your hand and then stuck it, the product back inside of itself, you've contaminated it unknowingly. And that's just because in a society that we have, this is what we've done. Now, as a professional makeup artist, we use things like makeup palettes. Um, this one's a super cute one. It happens to be the shape of a heart. It is non-porous plastic so that nothing can be absorbed into this. There's also metal palettes. These work really good as well. We have product scoopers like spatulas. We can scoop product out, place it onto our clean palette. If I was to do your makeup, I would take this beautiful pink shade and I would stick it on this palette like that. And then with a brush, I would work off of the palette. This product would never come near your mouth or your skin or anything like that. You would simply use a brush, load a brush, apply it to the client's mouth. That dirty brush would go into what I have as a dirty brush bucket. Those get shampooed and cleaned and totally sanitized 100%. I have seen multiple places where the makeup artists, I'm using quotations, or the sales staff, um, they wear a brush belt on their bodies. These brush belts are often disgusting. They take wear them with them into the bathrooms. Um, and it's because the companies that provide this sort of service don't educate their staff fully to be 100% sanitary. Makeup artists for decades, we have been saying this. We've been saying it and we get shunned. In fact, I used to work at a retail place that I refused to do makeovers on people simply because the testers, they wanted me to do makeup on people with their, with their testers and testers are gross. When I do makeup, for example, when I do eyeshadow palette, let's say we're gonna do some eyeshadow on you. I'm gonna take a palette like this, and then I'm going to take an eyeshadow brush like this that's nice and clean. I also can use Q-tips in this in this same manner. And I literally brush out a little bit of product onto a Q, onto a tissue, and then I will work off the tissue onto your face. I'm gonna grab my phone so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna bang out a little bit more product. Um, and this is how I have always worked with my in my studio.
a little bit of product goes under the tissue and using that brush I will work onto your face with the with the eyeshadow I do this for all powder products I use powders that are uh, loose for like for example my translucent powders are loose these powders get applied to your skin off of the tissue there's no way that I've gone back into the palette and possibly contaminated it. There is so thought that um, eyeshadows and powders and things like that don't harbor as much bacteria, which is probably true. But let's say you have someone who has an underlying health condition or an open sore, and you are unaware that you have contaminated, you have a contaminated product, and then you apply it to their skin, you could possibly give them, uh, you know, flesh eating disease or you could have a massive skin reaction. So as a professional makeup artist, I work really hard to make sure that my products are 100% sanitary so that my clients don't have to fear. They sell a lot of products on the market, Beauty So Clean um, and a couple of the brands um, that claim to clean makeup. You can't clean a lipstick. Um, I remember someone telling me that you can take a lipstick and spray it with alcohol. I just grabbed an empty one. Um, that you can spray a lipstick with alcohol and then that sanitizes it. No, it doesn't. It absolutely does not sanitize it. All it does, and I grabbed another empty one. All it does is it puts um, alcohol, there we go. Um, it just puts alcohol in the product and just wipes the surface. Um, but it, what if the bacteria has gotten into that cream-based product? And if you have uh, something like, we're gonna use the coronavirus as an example, that can live on surfaces for up to 12 hours, um, that product now has coronavirus essentially, and is easy to, um, it's, it's easy to, um, transmit to someone else. So as a professional artist, I would say if you're ever getting your makeup done anywhere and they're using products in an unsanitary manner, get out of that chair. You don't have to sit there and be, you know, subjected to possibly getting injured or having your skin damaged or there's so many there's so many things and I have been saying this for a very long time I got in trouble at one of my retail jobs because I said no I'm not putting a tester on someone's face and um, I got written up for that because I said no and because it's wrong it's 100% wrong no one should ever be subjected to possibly getting infected the, and that's the thing with with testers that are in, in an open form for people to stick their fingers in there's a chance why, why take the chance? Why not have all of these beautiful products under glass and have staff that can show, I mean, if you wanna have all your stuff out on display so people can see colors, fine, do that. Let them have product that they can stick their fingers in. But then you need to have the same products available that if you're gonna be doing makeovers, it needs to be available in a drawer. The staff needs to be 100% educated so that they understand a proper sanitation. You have to have clean hands. So either have soap and water available or you know hand sanitizer available for your your staff you also have to stop people from doing makeovers on anyone who has any massive open wounds or sores or pink eye or impetigo or, or cold sores um, these are highly contagious and if you're a trained professional you can you'll see them you'll know exactly what they are when you see it um, I've seen it everything I've seen every kind of skin thing and maybe I wouldn't necessarily know what it is but I went I don't think that this is right. I think we are going to have to reschedule. Now, if it's a wedding, there are ways to do makeup in a 100% sanitary manner so that that person doesn't get, you know, recontaminate your products. You're going to throw away those brushes you used on that person, or you're going to use disposables. You can also wear gloves. Um, I have worn a mask um, before to do makeup simply because the client had an infectious skin issue and I was worried for my own safety that I might contain, you know, contract it. Even though a mask generally is to stop things from falling out of your mouth. It made me feel better. And I, you know, went home at the end of the day feeling better. But these open-ended customer sticking their fingers in situations in all beauty retail stores has got to stop. It has got to stop to the point where those products are absolutely never used on someone's face. Like it's just, it has to. We have to as consumers say enough, enough. I don't want to try that product on my face. I want a clean one and I want a guaranteed clean one. Uh, in order to get a foundation that's not gonna, you know, you have to, like this is my foundation palette. It looks crazy, but this is the same thing as like a cream, it's just a cream palette, this is RCMA. You would scrape out the product on a little spatula like this, and then you can apply it again to your nice little clean palette like this, and then work with a brush 
off of the palette onto the client's face. And that is literally the only way that cream-based anything's that's the, that same trick would work for lipsticks, foundations, um, lotions, things like that. Uh, my friend and makeup artist colleague uh, Jordan Liberty was talking about how he watched a woman use her acrylic nail to scoop out product and put it on a palette and then put that on a model's face. That is inappropriate behavior and these sort of things have got to stop. I once was told by a client that she couldn't believe how sanitary I was and I was like, well, everyone should be this way. Like if, if I'm, I'm essentially doing a service that could potentially be harmful if I wasn't taking precautions. And I've been doing this for over 17 years and I love my business. I get to be in lives with all kinds of women, but the retail end of this business is disgusting as far as testers go. So as consumers, we can say no more. That's enough. I don't want to, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. I want a clean tester. Did you know most retail establishments don't want you to know this? Did you know that if you buy a product and you take it home and it's brand new, you take it home, you try it on yourself and you don't like it, if you have your receipt, you can bring those products back. So keep your receipts, check their return dates. Some are 10 days, some are 15 days, some are 30 days. Um, and sometimes you just have to have the original packaging as well. Um, keep those little barcodes, which are like these little guys, keep the little barcodes handy so that, <clears throat> excuse me, so that you can make an easy return. Sometimes they're gonna suggest, how about we do an exchange? And you can say, no, I'd like a return, please, because I have my receipt, my original packaging, and the product that doesn't work for me. This is a much safer option than even trying a tester in the store. I highly recommend doing that. Anyways, I am passionate about sanitation, and I really want to make sure that people are being safe and that they are not getting you know, anything on their skin that shouldn't be, and if you're paying for a service, those artists should be exceptionally clean. This is my opinion. And this isn't just because of this whole coronavirus breakout. This is because this is how it should be. If you have questions, I'd love for you to email me or ask questions, message me. I'm more than happy to be um, open to answering anything. Uh, again, I'm a professional makeup artist. I've been doing this for about 17 years. I'm exceptionally passionate about sanitation and I think retail establishments need to step up their game as far as testers go. I hope everybody has a beautiful day. Bye-bye.